media is so central to how Americans think about things. It didn't happen if it didn't come on TV. It didn't happen if we don't have a picture of it. Where do these images come from? What is the relationship between these images and American foreign policy in the Middle East? We've had a history of denigrating and bestializing the Prophet Muhammad, Islam, and Arabs as a people. The new moral geography represented the Middle East as a world of dangerous religious fanaticism. You're in my country now. You're my wife. You do as I say, you understand me. 1979 is the great turning point uh, in the history of the 20th century and indeed in the history of our times because the consequences of 1979 in Iran are comparable with the consequences of 1789 in France. It's a revolution of world historical importance and its reverberations carry on to the present. American evangelical Christians were taken by the idea that the founding of Israel would lead to the second coming of Jesus. In every case, it was said that those who oppose Israel are against the forces of goodness in the world. They're evil. And so, Arabs come out very badly in this scenario. No, I just wanted you to know that I'm a Jew. This is my country. The anger at the United States for its policies in the Middle East, for the utter failure to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, led to an increasing sense of hostility toward the United States. Bin Laden entered the tent and put his Kalashnikov down beside him in his white robes, you know, welcome uh, Mr. Robert to this place, it's good to see you again, blah, blah, blah. His last words were to me, I pray to God, Mr. Robert, that he permits us to turn America into a shadow of itself. I don't know if all history changed, but it certainly made the identification of the alien others really, really simple. Because we got a really spectacular terrorist event, and we got a very, very ra rapid dramatis personae cast list, and lo and behold, they were all them guys. So, don't you think that they're the guys we should be frightened of? Now, this is a conversation that you and I ought to have, but let's not take yeah, the time of our resource answer, people. May we go to the next question, please? Thank you very much. Yeah. Because the answer would have been that uh, our relationship with Israel uh, is one of the main reasons that we have a terrorist problem. And the Israel lobby does not want that message to get out to the American people because it would then force Washington to change its policies towards Israel. There's often sometimes there's sometimes a gutlessness that we don't want to like push the boundaries of what of what can be written or what can't be written. And to me, that's the that's the problem. So over and over again, you see what you do is you you change and diminish the language of the conflict. The wall becomes the fence or the barrier. The occupation zone becomes the security zone. The occupied territories becomes disputed territories. Um, settlements become neighborhoods. And so we make the Middle East unintelligible for people who don't live there or visit there. And then I went to the ticket counter and I wanted the guy to know whose side I was on, so I caught myself enunciating English like never before. <laughs> I wanted him to know, I was like, hello, my fellow American. How are you? Yes, I'm here to board the aeroplane. <laughs> Carry-ons? Just this American flag, that's all I'm carrying on. <laughs> Get off!